Uh, my name's Larry and I'm with Under the Bridge Flies. And this is a muddler minnow. Muddler minnow. Um, guy's tying these and I told him I'd put one of these up on the thing for him. So we're going to tie this real quick. And I'm going to tie it on a size 8. This is a size 8. 2220 Daiichi, I do believe. Yeah, okay, had to check that out. Anyway, uh, Daiichi 2220, size 8. Um, these are really good hooks. That's a 4X long hook for streamers and such, so um, it works pretty good. Anyway, um, this is a pretty simple uh, muddler pattern that uh, guy showed me, and it works really good around here in white and olive. We're going to do the white right now, so I am using a UTC Ultra Thread 140 denier because I need the extra strength for when we wrap that deer here for sure. So, but we're just going to start. I start mine a little bit back from the hook because I like the bare hook when I go to spin my deer here. It just spins a lot easier. Um, some guys don't really care because they're really good at spinning deer hair, but if you're not, leave that a little bit bare up here. It makes it a little bit easier for you. Um, and I'm tying these to where you can learn how to spin deer hair. So that's what I would do if I was just learning and that's how I learned so alright now you want to keep this shank fairly level and even because you can really see um, bumps and stuff when you're putting your materials in here uh, the first thing I'm gonna put in is a turkey I'm gonna grab me a turkey quill here now I'm just going to use a piece of turkey quill for the tail and we're just going to grab off a little section here, and there's oh, probably not even a quarter inch. I mean, but, and you can make your tail about as long as you want to. I'm making these about three quarters of the shank of the hook, as you can see there. So we're just going to set that down and get a wrap around the back and keep that on top there. It's because, like I said, you want this to stay pretty uniform. And then when you get up to your thread up close there, just go ahead and trim off that excess. That way you can keep that shank clear, like I was saying earlier. And just go ahead and tie that down real good. And bring your thread all the way back. Now, next thing we're going to put in is a piece of wire. And I'm using uh, UTC Gold, and I'm actually using medium wire on this one. I never ever use medium wire, but for somehow, some reason, some way, I ended up with three rolls of this stuff, so I'm going to use it up. <laughs> Small is fine for this, but uh, this is going to give a little bit more weight on this muddler, so um, on this fly here, or streamers, or whatever, you know medium is fine I don't like I said small and uh, BR is what I use mostly so and BR stands for brassy so but you know I think BR and small is the same they look the same to me anyway Okay, so the next thing we're using is another UTC product. <laughs> and uh, this is Medium Opal Mirage Tinsel. And your uh, muddlers, you can use, I mean, just so many different things depending on what you colors you want to use on this. This brings some flash to this uh, muddler minnow and the fish really seem to like it. Um, I use this on this one and the olive one. And the cutthroats are just tearing these things up out at uh, Sunshine, so over here in Wyoming. Um, so I guess I don't know if it's the flash or what, but they're really working really good. Um, but you can use uh, floss or 
Unistretch. Um, Unistretch is a pretty good product there. Um, I have a whole bunch of different colors. They, uh, <clears throat> I'm one of these things out of here. But you can see uh, that's just pretty much what it is. It's just, you know, when you wrap it around, I mean, it works really good, except especially for ribbing and stuff. Um, making different color midge patterns. This is really nice for your midge body because you can get everything covered in one simple, you know, swipe. And it's a lot better, you know, you don't have to keep going over and over it like you do thread. Um, this unit stretch works really good. It also uh, coats real nice if you're using a UV on top of it. It works real good. Um, so, Anyway, um, I got my, I got off track again, didn't I? Huh. So we're going to wrap our Mirage, Opal Mirage here. And we're just going to try to, try to get it going forward. <laughs> that first one could be tricky. <laughs> and try to keep them. No spaces in it just try to keep them side by side if you get little spaces in it doesn't matter the fish do not care besides that your uh, gold wire will cover most of those up anyway so but uh, just take your tinsel and go all the way to the front of this fly and once you get up to the front there you can uh, capture your tinsel if you're there already this is medium um, medium works really great um, small on this size of a fly would just take forever to wrap and large I'm not a big fan of the large on wrapping because it just it's off stiffer and it doesn't I don't think you can't get it as tight as you can all right so you're gonna take your gold wire and you're gonna go opposite of whatever way you just wrap that Mirage and that's going to lock that all together right there. So anytime you're wrapping wire try to if possible Try to wrap it opposite of the last thing that you put on your you know wrapped on your fly and That'll lock it all together for you and you'll have a better fly in the long run for it All right, so we got that now It's going to helicopter this out of there this medium, you know, it takes a little bit of time to do that with. <laughs> All right, now we're going to put in our wing. White turkey. Turkey, turkey, turkey. Anyway, the guy that uh, I told I'd do this video for is probably sitting in a deer stand right now. So, hope he gets a big one there. All right, so... Your wing is just going to set up just like a so on the muddler and you're just going to get keep that on top and capture if you can <laughs> there we go capture that turkey and just keep uh, moving it forward and once you get it captured just uh, tie that down real good and if you have one or two come out don't worry about it see there nice and easy all right next thing is of course the deer hair so you're going to need a deer stacker a uh, hair stacker rather <laughs> this is that's a small deer man that's a south carolina deer there <laughs> they're small <laughs> you ever seen a south carolina deer they look like big dogs i lived there for a while they <laughs> they need better hunting walls that's for sure When I lived there, it was, you could harvest seven deer and just crazy. I was raised in Illinois, so we got some giant deer there. All right, so we're going to cut a little clump of uh, deer hair and about a pencil width is what we're working with here. So I cut that off and... Your deer hair, the cleaner the hide, 
the better you're going to have on spinning this deer hair. Um, if possible, when you go buy your deer hair, and if you're harvesting deer and using the deer hair, you're going to have uh, a little bit of issue probably because there's a lot of under fur on most harvested deer hairs. Um, I got guys sending me deer hair and stuff, and it's great for, uh, you know, like elk hair caddis and stuff that doesn't really matter, but underneath of this pelt here, see my deer hair? But when you flip that up and you see a hole, you know, you're pulling it out. See, I'm not getting no fuzz out of there when I pull it. And you can take your comb or whatever, you know, and get down in there real good and give it a tug. And you see there's just no, there's just no fur, under fur on that to where it's really, you know, a very nasty anyway. Let me see if I can find another pelt here real quick. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, so like this olive one, if you get down in there and pull it out, you know, you're going to, if you can see, it's not, this one ain't too awful bad either, actually. But try to get some of that off there. See that fur right there that's underneath of this? I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but it's got, uh, see that fur right there when you're uh, looking at your deer hair um, if you can in the store or whatever check it out and see how much under fur see like look at this one now that's a lot of under fur in this one and this one i use for elk hair caddis so it doesn't really matter but this one has a lot of under fur you can see it all over the pelt and everything that's not very good i mean this is no good for spinning you can see that um, you don't want that in your deer hair. I mean, you can get it if you have no choice to spin deer hair, but man, you gotta sit there and really clean that stuff up real good. Get you some Velcro or some uh, toothbrush or something and get that hair out of there. Anyway, take your pencils with, put it in your stacker. Give it some stacks right there. Get them tips nice and even is what we're looking for. Once you get your uh, tips good and even, go ahead and just grab a hold of them, pull that out by the tips. Now, if you grab a hold of that, then you can still clean that up some more as well. Okay, so, like I said, you want really nice, um, clean deer hair to spin. Now, here's what we're looking at. Now, I want my collar, I don't want my collar to uh, overpower this, you know, what I'm doing here. So I want this all back here to stay like it is. So I just want my collar to be about half the distance of the fly. So once I get that where I know I want it, then I'm just gonna grab it with my other hand and I'm gonna trim this off and give myself a little bit extra for the front here. And I hold it over the trash can if possible. See there? So now I'm going to remeasure where I just had that and that's where I want that. So I'm just going to grab a hold of my deer hair and we're just going to go around once then twice and then on the third one see I'm pulling on that and just letting it go and just keep on spinning that. And as you do, just add a little bit more pressure and you see I'm pulling on that and I can't get no more out of it because it's all good and tight there. So now the next thing, here's a little trick for you, big pin. Just take that and push it back. See there? And then hold on to it right there and these smaller fibers are sometimes a pain in the butt, but what this does is just tightens it all up for you. And once you get your thread in front of there, see what I'm doing there? Now I'm pulling it back, and we got to get a hold of all those little threads there. And then once we get a hold of them and start turning, see we can really get that pushed back here and get that, you know, all laid down real nice and neat. And then 
Let's go back up a little bit so I can grab a hold of a. It's a, dealing with this uh, smaller amount of deer hair. It's just a little bit harder. So once you get that pushed back, you should look something like a there. Now you can add just a little bit more to finish filling that tub in, and you ain't gonna need a lot there. So, and this does not have to be stacked or nothing. So I'm just gonna grab me a little piece here, and I'm just grabbing me a little section. We'll clean that off right there. Every time you get something in your hands that you can't do nothing with, your nose itches, don't it? All right. So. I'm just going to hold that on there and this one's a little bit tougher because you got to get around that and you don't want to grab a hold of a whole bunch of deer hair on that other piece so I'm going to just spin that around and you can help it along if you have to <laughs> but see now I'm up to my point so I'm just going to take my pen in here again and I want to push that back and we want to get up there behind that eye so we got to have a little room there which you can push this back quite a ways so you know and then if you're not getting it just grab a hold of it with your fingers there and see how much room I got there I ain't got a lot of room there but you see what I'm saying this gives you enough to tie off on so keeps your eye of your hook opened up too and then uh, just go ahead and get that whip finished while you got that all nice and in there without grabbing a hold of any of those hopefully just like that my uh you see my flies moving all over the place let's see if we can't get another one around there and you don't have to double whip finish yours if you don't want to but i do have it I said habit, not rabbit. All right, so now you can take a little bit of Zappa Gap Super Glue, whatever you got. I use a Zappa Gap, you know, the brush on stuff. It works real good. And just get a little around that thread right there to hold that all in place for you. All righty. All right, so now you got all that done. Next thing you want to do is want to trim these things up. And the double edge here's one I've been using but it's all dull now but you can see the how I can bend that thing to shape my head now if I use this it's just gonna mess it up because my blades not sharp and you get these dollar store family dollar dollar general dollar tree dollar this dollar that what I know you got one in your town so anyway just get that out of there five blades for a dollar Ten sides for one dollar. And this is the way to do this. So <laughs> anyway, so we're just going to fluff this up a little bit and pull it back towards us so we can see a little bit. And I usually have a magnifying glass. So if I screw this up a whole lot, then sorry, because I really can't. I usually use my magnifying glass to do this part, but because I uh, am blind. Let's see if we can, I don't know how that's going to affect this video, but this way I can see the doggone thing. But if you just push it, you don't have to cut, you just push on that and you can shape your head really good. And you can see I'm not, you know, you got to watch where you're going with this thing though, because you will cut too far back. So be real careful um, not to cut your collar too much you want to keep that collar on there see and then just spin it a little bit and keeping your blade rounded <clears throat> that's I mean it takes a while to get used to this it really does but once you get it then and I should be doing this a little bit slower but video purposes you know um, you can make your head as big as you want to on these. And this is a small, small um, size muddler too, so we're not setting no, you know, if you're Chinese on a bigger hook and making a larger muddler, then this is a lot more, a lot easier to do as far as 
trimming the deer hair. When you get down to these smaller ones, then it's kind of a pain. Try doing these on a 16. <laughs> That's a big pain in the... All right, now you see where my... It's a little bit longer than what I wanted, but it's getting sparse, you know, so there's not a lot um, in the way of my flash and my, you know, turkey hair. So where's my, uh, here it is. So if we take our toothbrush here and just clean that up a little bit, then there went a feather. You see what I'm saying? It's good and sparse. It doesn't overpower the fly. You can still see the flash in there. You got a nice little round head with the thread between the thread and the head. <laughs> you know, kind of make it look like one, which, you know, you can really get in there and see how close you can get this. I mean, and you shouldn't have to saw this deer. I mean, you shouldn't have to saw this. You shouldn't be going like this. You should just be... You know, just pushing your blade, just nice and easy. And you can sit here all day and trim these things if you wanted to, trying to get the perfect, you know, perfect heads, but I'm not going to. <laughs> all right, so anyway, that's pretty much the end of that. I mean, that's, you know, a easy way to do a muddler. The razor blade really speeds up the process and gives you more full control over what you're doing there. Like I said, go slow, um, grab a hold of those hairs when you get to the back, you know, and you can, if you got a magnifying glass like I'm using there, you can really see those and, you know, you want to get that wing, that color around this. That's, you know, part of this fly that's very important. So, but you don't want a bunch. I mean, you want it nice and sparse like this. Look at, you can really see, I mean, the entire fly, um, this, you know, the mirage comes through it real nice. So that's, I think that's way much what's attracting the fish on these flies. But anyway, muddler minnow, easy enough, Ty. Um, check out some more of my videos and uh, check us out on Facebook at Under the Bridge Flies. Got all kinds of new flies on there uh, for sale lately. Uh, smallmouth bass, bass flies, boy bunch of pike and musky flies i've been doing for the last couple of days and check out my new mouse pattern too it's a winner anyway uh thanks for uh checking us out and we'll see you on the next video have a great day